everybody, welcome to the show. My name is Amanda Ostrander. I am a teacher turned homeschool mom, and this is Raising A to Z, a place where we talk about all things homeschooling. And today we're talking about all things unit studies. So recently I got a whole bunch of questions about unit studies. I had done a series of Q and A videos where people had submitted questions and I answered them. And one of them was about like, what kind of unit studies have we done? What are some of our favorites? And I kind of like posted a list of like what we've done over the past several years. And that led to like an influx of questions all about unit studies. And so here I am today doing a kind of a unit studies 101. And so, Let's get into it. What are unit studies? So unit studies are essentially when you pick a topic and that topic is your focus for the month. Um, there are kind of two different ways to approach this. So some people do unit studies as an approach, similar to how some people are like Charlotte Mason homeschoolers or unschoolers or, or whatever. Some people will do unit studies as their homeschooling approach. And when they do that, they would pick a topic for an amount of time, say a month. And for the month of whatever, September, they're going to learn about sharks and they're going to learn everything that they can learn about sharks. Sharks are going to be the main focus for all of their subjects. They're going to integrate all of their subjects into learning about sharks, all their language, all their science or social studies. They are going to study, you know, famous biologists who have studied sharks. They're going to learn about like the history of sharks and shark evolution. They're going to learn about the biology and marine biology and shark food chains. And they're going to do tons and tons of reading about sharks and maybe find a book where there's sharks as a main character or a main feature. They're going to use sharks for all of their math. And they're going to like calculate the number of teeth in a, a shark has and use n counting shark teeth as like how they do multiplication and addition and all these different things. And you can do that. That is a very integrated approach. It is a lot of work because most unit studies are not built that way. Um, but some people do do it and kudos for them because that's not how I do unit studies. But if you can do that, amazing. Um, and then there is kind of the other side where people again pick a topic. And maybe it is a topic for one subject is kind of the focus, but they pull in other topics as they can and as is like practical for them to do so. So there are kind of two different approaches. Some, not that one is better than the other. Uh, one is significantly easier than the other. I would say like the second approach is a bit more practical because that's tends to be how like schools do like a science unit. And so it's very easy to get unit studies that are kind of like that and then just add to it to kind of pull in different elements versus having to do everything. And especially math is a very kind of difficult one to pull in um, to a lot of topics. So not that one is better than the other or one is wrong or better. None of that. It's just one is probably a little bit more intensive and you have to do a lot more piecing together versus the other one that would probably be a little bit easier. But really, neither one is wrong. They're just different. Why do people do unit studies? Well, first off, they're just kind of awesome. Um, unit studies are a great way to kind of hook onto kids' interests and use their interests to learn about different things and to push their learning in different ways. So if you have a kid who is obsessed with a certain topic or a certain animal, like right now, Zoe is all about koalas loves koalas, wants to learn all about koalas, keeps telling me that she plans to move to Australia and be a wildlife rescue koala vet, specifically just dealing with koalas. So that's that's just our life right now. It's all about koalas. So what we could do is we could do a unit study on koalas and we could learn all about koalas. And koalas, we're gonna learn about different biologists who take care of koalas. We could learn about the different you know, issues koalas are facing, environmentalism and like habitat destruction. We could do biology of koalas, like what they eat, where they live, their habitat, their the food chain, their predators, like all of that. We could also do things like um, using the fact that we're reading about koalas to get Zoe to do like more reading about koalas and like learning more difficult words because like eucalyptus is not a normal word that we see every day. But when you see it 15 times in the koala book, 
that's a bigger vocabulary word that just kind of naturally pops up, right? It's a really good way to kind of like grab onto things your kids are interested in or like curious about and push their learning in that sense. The other nice thing about a unit study is often if you can, um, and like this is how we do it, we do unit you know, studies family style. So I'll, we pick a topic and that is our topic for the month and we all learn about it. And sometimes some kids are gonna grasp onto one section and like really dive into that. Sometimes they're gonna grasp onto another section and that's more interesting for them and they'll kind of dive into that. But in general, the main topic is there. I provide kind of the spine and then each kid kind of goes off on their little rabbit trails of like things they wanna learn about or things that they find interesting and they tend to pick up on different things because of their different ages and their maturities and their ability to understand things. So family style is nice because I mean, I'm teaching kind of one lesson or reading one book and doing one activity, but everybody's doing it all together. So it's nice in that sense that it's less work for me, but everyone's participating. It's more family time, which is always nice. And it's often like, depending on what unit you're using, um, it's less money because you're buying one unit or you're like investing in one topic and you can often like use it for more kids. So for example, I might get a unit study off of Teachers Pay Teachers, print it off and both my kids will use it. One will do, I expect Alexi to do a little bit more and write a little bit more. Zoe, she doesn't write as much. So we're using one unit study and they're both gonna give me different answers because it's different things they picked up on, but I only paid for it once, I just printed it twice kind of thing. So it tends to be a little bit more budget friendly as well. The other nice thing about a unit study is you don't have to do it all the time. Like I said, some people are very like unit studies, that is their approach. Unit studies don't have to be an all or nothing thing. So some people are not unit studies people. They are just like, they have their own curriculum, they have their own things. But a unit study can be a nice kind of tool to keep in your back pocket for when you have, you know, different time periods in the year where maybe you need something new. Maybe things have gotten kind of dull lately. You need to spice things up. Um, I often pick, like when I do my unit studies, I always pick the most exciting unit study for January because my kids have a really hard time coming back after Christmas. So I always make sure there's something super, super engaging in January. I know some people like to like throw it in whenever they're having kind of a lull or just like a little bit of burnout. It's something easy. It's really engaging, kind of gets everyone hyped up again. And you can just do the unit study and then be done with it and then move on or go back to your regular curriculum. It's kind of, it's, it's a great tool to just to have to like liven things up or to like hook kids back in after a difficult time. Some people like it as like a Kickstarter when school's just starting up again, or if you've been on vacation for a while. So it's kind of, it's also just like a great tool to have in your back pocket when things need a little spice up. So where do we get unit studies from? This is a great question. So number one, obviously you can make your own unit studies. And I do do that. I have a whole video on how to build unit studies. I will put the link for you here as well as down in the description, but you can build a unit study. I typically, I used to, when the kids were really young, build all of their unit studies. That got very tiring and it was a lot of like mental work for me. So what I switched to was buying unit studies for the topics that were like readily available and then building unit studies when there's a topic that like I couldn't find a really great option for. So for example, um, we did a whole unit study on dogs, okay, um, a couple years ago. And like I built that unit study because that's not a readily available unit study out there. Like there aren't classes or like groups that are like, we're gonna learn about the history of dog breeds today. That's what my kids wanted to learn about. That wasn't readily available. So I like put my energy and time into building that unit study. Whereas like ancient Egypt, they are a dime a dozen. They're, that is a very common topic to come up at various age levels. You can find unit studies all over the place on ancient Egypt. I go back and forth between buying unit studies that are readily available, especially if there's a topic that's kind of like out there. And then if they have a topic that they really wanna learn about and it's not readily available, I'll build it. Um, but when I'm looking to buy unit studies, there are a lot of companies out there. So I'll go through some of my favorites or ones that I've used in the past. Um, Teachers Pay Teachers is one of my favorites, especially if it's a topic that um, you see come up a lot in school systems. Um, so for example, like ancient Egypt, ancient, we're gonna like Vikings, um, plants, habitats, flight, like things that kind of come up more commonly in the school system. B 
because teachers are using it in their classroom. They're also selling it on Teachers Pay Teachers or TBT. And so I do love going to TBT for unit studies. Um, one, because it's supporting teachers. And I think teachers are doing so much. They might as well make money off of what they're making for their classrooms. Um, but also there's just like so many options out there and I find it a really affordable option. Typically I find that most like unit studies are going to go anywhere from like, I've seen some that are like ridiculously cheap, like a dollar on average though. I'm seeing them that kind of run around like the five to $10 mark, give or take. Um, and that's a pretty decent unit study, especially when I'm getting two kids worth out of it because it's kind of like a Pinterest slash search engine kind of situation. I do find it's better to know what you're going in for. So like, I know I'm looking for a Vikings unit. I will go in and like look for a Vikings unit. It's not really one where you want to like browse because there's just so much and you will never leave teachers pay teachers. Knowing what you're looking for before you go in does make it a lot easier to navigate. And then always looking for um, PDFs because sometimes you'll find like things that are like slideshows, easel and uh, smart board. Those are like assistive technology things that happen in the classroom. And so sometimes that will like raise the cost on them um, because they're made for multiple platforms and stuff. So if you can find some that are like PDFs or whatever, a little bit easier on the budget. But yeah, I love Teachers Pay Teachers. There's so much, so many options out there and they're all from different creators. So like some people are just better at certain things than others and it's just, it's a great option. Another one that we have gotten units from is The Good and the Beautiful. Um, you can get PDF downloads from The Good and the Beautiful. I guess you could technically order it. I'm Canadian though and that shipping is insane. Um, I looked at ordering one unit and I think the unit ended up was supposed to unit with all the extras was going to be like $60. And like, I mean all the extra, cause I was like, I'm going to just say everything that it has, see how much it was. I think the shipping was 75. <laughs> so yeah, but a lot of their, most of their units are available. Their science and their social studies units are available as a PDF download, which makes it significantly more reasonable. And when you do the download, um, you get the teacher's manual the age, whatever age, what it's for. I think technically it's supposed to be like grades like three to six and the grade seven, eight is there as well. That's a separate book, but it comes in your download. So for the cost of yours, you're getting a multiple pretty big age span. So that's kind of nice. Um, so that is an option and it's relatively, it's, it's a decent price. Like it's not over, I think it's $20 a book which isn't crazy, but it isn't abnormal. Harbor and Sprout, Campfire Curriculum, those are other curriculum companies that are available um, that I have purchased from. They're both very different, very interesting. You do get a lot, but uh, Harbor and Sprout is a similar idea where it's multiple, you're getting multiple grades on it. There is also Gather Round. They are not my favorite, um, but I do have a full review. If you wanna see it, I'll put the link and put it down below as well. Um, but they are a unit studies company. So some people, they're kind of a love it or hate it kind of situation. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, but there's a lot of options there. And then in general, like if you are just like looking for something quick and easy, you could always just try Pinterest and just type in a topic and you might find some really great stuff. That's how I found an ancient Egypt, um, unit study last year and it ended up being free. It was just like, I was looking for activities for ancient Egypt and this unit study popped up and it was a free download. So you never know. There's lots and lots of companies out there. A lot of people make them individually. A lot of homeschool moms make them and sell like whatever they're doing in there with their homeschoolers. So definitely kind of look around, but there's lots and lots of options and they tend to be very affordable compared to like buying a textbook or a year round program. How long does it take to do a unit study? Now, this is obviously going to depend on the unit that you're doing, how in depth you wanna go, all that kind of stuff. Um, for me, typically I say younger kids, I kind of try to cap them out about four weeks. I find like four weeks is a good amount of time for most kids kind of under the ages of like grade four or five to kind of focus on something. And then they get kind of bored with it and then they want to move on. Um, so that's kind of what I do. I kind of hit around the four, sometimes five weeks, depending on what else is going on. But like, that's kind of what we're, we're averaging four to five weeks on a, on a unit study. As your kids get older and the topics get a little bit more advanced or you're just maybe you decide to study something that's a little bit 
bigger or in depth, um, then you could easily kind of extend that into like six, eight, 12 weeks. Really, it's up to you. But that's kind of like what we do. We're typically, I, I often recommend like anywhere from four to six weeks is a good amount of time for a unit study because we want to keep things engaging and we want the kids to be like, yes, I'm excited to learn about this. And we don't want it to become like a bore for them. How do I do unit studies in our home? So we do not do math. We are kind of the second, when we were talking earlier about the two different approaches of unit studies, we are the second. Uh, we do, we don't include math because <laughs> that just seems insane to me. Um, I will say a lot of like the pre-purchased unit studies don't include math. I find it a lot easier to just have a math program and then do unit studies on top of that. So we tend to, we don't do math. We have our unit studies and then I also have like the language arts that we do. And if I can make the language arts tie in, I will, but it's not my like main focus. Um, so typically I will pick top, my kids and I will like sit together and we'll pick topics. And from that, I kind of, when I schedule them out through my year, tend to like rotate between a science topic and a social studies topic and maybe another topic. Like I kind of try to like rotate through so that we're doing different things throughout the year. And it's not just like four months of science and then like four months of history, like something like that. Like I want it to be engaging. So we kind of switch between topics and focuses throughout the year. And whenever I have a topic, I kind of decide what is the main focus of it going to be? Is it going to be mostly like a science focus? Is it going to be mostly a social studies focus? Mostly a literacy, but like whatever it is and kind of like aim to hit like whatever we're doing is going to be like 80% that subject and then add in wherever it makes sense. So if you're looking at like our past year for science, we're doing like the current year that we're in. Um, for science, we're doing topics like we do, we're doing bees, rocks and minerals, birds, and we did like a mushroom and fungus unit. And then for social studies, we did Indigenous People of Canada pre-contact and holidays. And then I did two other units. One was writers. And then I did another one that was music. And so then like one month we did social studies, one month we did science. Then we did another topic, we did music. And then we did like, we kind of rotate through. So we're getting a different bunch of different stuff throughout the year and we're not getting bored with it. When I get a unit, if I'm not building one, cause then I have full control obviously. But if I'm purchasing a unit, which I like, I try to purchase as many as I can just cause it's a way easier and like a lot less work for me to just like read through what's happening and do it. If I can, I will purchase a unit. Then I will go through it, kind of check it out, see what's included, what I need to do, prep all that, whatever I need to do before the month starts. And then I like to add to it. So like, for example, next month we're doing rocks and minerals. I will go through and I will like add stuff to it. So I will go to the library and our own book collection and like pull all the books that are have to do with rocks, rocks, stones, gems, jewels, anything like that. Um, I will try to find some activities online or Pinterest to supplement in case there aren't very many or there are only a few in the like Unistate itself. I'll pull different things like that. And then I will also try to see if I can find like a book, a big book. So a novel that will kind of be our bedtime read aloud and see if I can pull something that's like remotely related to it. I will also make a list of like movies or um, episodes of shows like Magic School Bus or something like that that I know off the top of my head are related to the topic. So like I'm already thinking Magic School Bus has a rock video. I think they have a couple videos on rocks that's going in rocks and gems or whatever that's going into my my like list of things like that will be an activity one day so we'll sit down and watch a video on rocks from magic school bus and then um if i can if it works out and makes sense um i might pull like a novel study that would be our language program like for example we might pull like a novel from the Brave Writers singles that is like related to the topic. And we might put that in there as like our, like, because it's related. So for example, next month we're doing um, birds. Alex, well, we already have a book, like a big book to read at night. Well, it's more of like a fun read aloud thing and like bringing in like connections and stuff. Um, Alexi's going to be reading the trumpet of the swan, which is about a swan, which is obviously a bird. So if I can, I'll bring it in, but I consider that a bonus. Okay. And then typically I'm doing unit studies three days a week 
in terms of like workbook work. So usually we do it like Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Um, and then like Wednesdays we have gymnastics. So I, I'm lucky if I get one subject done on Wednesdays and Fridays we typically do like one subject and, um, math or, or sorry, one subject and then writing or art. So we're doing it, but then I also like we do because we're doing a lot of read alouds, those happen throughout the week regardless. So yeah, that's how I do unit studies. I know. So for our members, if you are a YouTube member, on our channel, you get the bonus videos. You get to see everything that we do. Um, so for YouTube members, I do once a month, I do a video going through what the unit is, what curriculum I used, um, what books I got from the library, what activities we did, what movies we went on, what watched, what field trips we went on. Um, I like literally break down the entire unit and like walk you through what we did, why we did it, how we did it and do the whole, thing every single month for all of our YouTube members. YouTube members also get cool bonuses like early releases on the weekly videos, polls, you get an extra bonus video that's just for you guys, bonus content, and so much more. So if you want to become a member, check it out and then you'll see what I do for unit studies every single month. And lastly, when I'm talking about unit studies, because I think a lot of people freak out when I'm, when I talk about unit studies, because they feel overwhelmed. When I'm working with my kids, I only teach three subjects at a time or three things at a time. I teach math, I teach language arts, and one unit study. It just makes things a lot more doable and it means that my day isn't as long. So I know some parents are going to be in here and they're like, oh, well, we do math and language and social studies and history and da da da, and they go through all the things. I'm like, you could do that 100% if that's what you want to do. I don't. I do math every day. I do language arts every day. And then unit studies a couple times a week. And the reason why is because if you look at the school system, kids are getting anywhere from like 30 to 40 minutes of science and social studies twice a week in Ontario, for example. That's not a lot. If you look at it in terms of like units and topics, they do up to grade six, grade one through grade six, kids are doing four units of science and two units of social studies. After grade seven, for grade seven and eight, they do four units of science, two units of history, and two units of geography. That's eight topics. In our home, we're typically averaging anywhere from eight to 10 topics a year in terms of units that we're getting through. So we're doing just as much, if not more, than the school system is in a much smaller amount of time because rather than like switching between subjects constantly, we're just like focusing on one subject per month. So like I said, one month might be math, language, science, and all our extra time is going to science. The next month we're doing math, language, and social studies. All of our energy goes to that. Then we do math, language, and science again. We do all our energy to that. So it may it means less topics per month, which is a little bit easier for me to prep, but it also means that we're getting through a lot of material in a much shorter amount of time. And often it means we get to do more in a year than the school system does without actually doing a lot more work. So that's how we do unit studies. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I will definitely get to them. But really, like, I think unit studies are just awesome. Personally, I don't know how people don't do unit studies, but like, I just think they're a great tool to have in your back pocket at the very least. And I just think my, my kids just love being able to have some say in what we're learning about and being able to follow kind of their interests and their personalities is just such a nice, it's such a nice and easy way to like customize our education to them and to like what they want to learn about. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe, click the bell, consider becoming YouTube members, which is super cool. And make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, where you can get little sneak peeks on how we do unit studies in our homeschool. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.